May the peace of God be with you. We welcome you this evening as we take the opportunity to worship our Lord in spirit and truth. I think it's the most precious times of the year. We gather together and think for the moment that uh, our God sent to us the most precious gift of all, and that's his son. And tonight we will be able to worship him and to remind ourselves of what he did, not only in the manger, but as he walked life and how he healed us and taught us and eventually become our suffering servant. And to that we can give Thanks and praise. So I welcome you tonight. I'm glad that you're with us. As we start our service, there's one thing I want us to do. I don't know about you. Have you been rushed about? Feels as though your tongue may be hanging out, taking that last breath, making cherry fluff and so forth. Well, here's what I want us to do. I want us just to be still, bowing our heads just for a few moments, closing our eyes, and just thinking about how good and gracious our God is. We pray now for the precious Holy Spirit to fall fresh upon us. May our wor worship be worthy unto you, for we acknowledge you're the only one worthy of our praise, our worship, and our thanksgiving. Come now, teach us in Christ, I pray. Amen. If you will, stand with me to our call to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Let's stand.
There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come.
We have lit our Advent candles for Christ our hope, Christ our way, Christ our joy, and Christ our peace. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Today, we light the Christ candle as a symbol of Jesus Christ, our light, and the light of the world. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us your Son to be our Savior. By the power of your Holy Spirit, let your light shine through us. Amen. Amen. And let us stand together and sing joy to the world. You may be seated. It's customary our scripture for this evening will be coming to us from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taking place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And there will be a sign for you. You will, be, you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest in heaven. And on earth, peace among those whom he favors. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's with my privilege this 
evening to introduce to you our soloist, Miss Kim McMurphy. And as she comes, pray that the God's Spirit will guide her. But may you hear God's message through her words. Miss Kim. When you thank for the moment, the divine mystery given to us because God loved us that he gave his only begotten son. It came in the form of a baby. Grace was extended by God from above. Grace. That which we need the most but deserve the least. 
grace. Grace that comes into our lives in the very humble beginnings there in the babe lying in a manger. It was a grace so powerful that it was missed. The church of the day didn't see it, definitely didn't understand it. And to think that said grace was given to none other than the lowest caste of the entire world, shepherds. And they heard the grace of God spoken through the angels. Grace. When I think of grace for the moment, I think in my heart, and my mind, grace begins with pure humility, us accepting. It is a grace that moves from that to allows me to, to be able to be transformed in my life. I'm not the person I used to be. I've been redeemed. What about you? Grace. Marvelous grace given to us from the form of a babe. A grace that allows me to see in my life, I'm not perfect. You perfect? Grace allows me to see with all things the ability to say, I am sorry. Grace teaches me to have fun. Can you imagine that first night? Yeah, <laughs> it may have been a hardship for Mary to give birth and there in a cow's trough and lay her baby, but you can almost hear the giggles. You can see the gleam in Joseph's eyes. You can see Mary's tender kiss upon her child's face. This was a gift from God. Grace. Grace helps me understand that every once in a while I get it right. What do I mean by that? It lets me realize that I have an humble beginnings, but sometimes I mess up. Anybody you mess up? But a grace that doesn't condemn me by any means, but is a grace to the love of God given to me and says, okay, you messed up, you fessed up, and now let me, let me have a grace to give you new beginnings and new horizons. Grace also teaches me to have fun. How many like to have fun? How many like to have fun? Okay, everybody, break your arms out. Let's go. Come on, come on, let's fly. Come on. I say all the time: If you're not going to come to church, have fun. Let's go home. Because that's what it's about. When grace touches our lives, we are to have fun. Sometimes grace comes to us in different ways and obvious ways. Back some 30 years ago, I was given a, a robe that I wear on, on most occasions. And I had never worn a dress in my life. That's what a robe is, I found out. As was my habit in the day, I knelt down. And as I would knelt down and I offered the prayer of the morning prayer, I got up. And when I got up, I stepped in the back of the hem of that dress. As I did, my arms flailing in the air, I hit the chair behind me that was in the choir loft and fell flat on my back. And all of a sudden, my dear bride started laughing. And then everyone in the church began to, to laugh. I was angry, hurt, embarrassed. But somehow or another, through that, grace began to touch my life and taught me a lesson that day. I'm going to stumble. I'm going to mess up. I'm going to fall. And at times, people may laugh at me. But in the end, I can acknowledge the fact that God's grace covers that and laughter comes all around us. If you can't learn to laugh at yourself, you're in trouble. That's what grace does. I found through grace, life is serious. But you know what? It's not that serious. And sometimes we make it more serious than it needs to be. We get caught up in the tensions of this, of this season, making sure everything looks pretty and nice. Heavens forbid I've scrubbed enough bathrooms. I'm tired of scrubbing bathrooms, Nancy. Because we want our house to look just right. Right? Man, she wouldn't even let me out of the house until she presses everything I have. I got enough starch in me I could almost break. But here's what I know. She used the gifts that she's been given by God to bless me. She uses the gifts given to her by God to bless you. And let me tell you this. Because of God's son given to us the grace, he uses you to bless others. It is the grace at this time of year we experience. You don't have to go far. You hear it ringing in the bell. 
they're outside of Walmart. We see the grace extended to those who are secret Santas and all of a sudden their layaway products are now paid for. Somehow or another, the grace of God has touched it and though the world may not fully understand it, it is touching lives all around the world even as we speak. Why? Most businesses shut down at noon today. Walmart will close at seven and nothing open tomorrow. Grace has come and we've experienced it but I must go on to the story and knowing that the grace taught us through Christ loved us healed us but eventually his grace led him to become a servant a servant unto death while it was a horrific story in of itself that's where grace becomes his greatest when it looks down from above and humanity sees us as it was and though he had the right to condemn and be upset our Lord and Savior Offer the powerful words of grace. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Grace is seen supremely in that of our sacraments, namely that of our Lord's Supper. It's a grace that reminds us his body was broken for us, his blood was shed for us, and that we each are redeemed by the blood of Christ. That's grace at its most powerful. A grace, I might add, is still working on me, on you. I have yet to arrive. Every once in a while, I get it right. And I'll have to go home and look at my wife and say, I'm sorry, I embarrassed you again tonight. But I love her with all, just as I love you in a special way. So tonight, we celebrate the Christmas Mass. Christmas Mass is the Christ Mass. It's Holy Communion. Patrick. See, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be in an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, and we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we're yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of the darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned our way, our love failed. Your love remained steadfast. You d- delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room. So Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of the stable Jesus was born. So the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. 
You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. And as your word became flesh, born of woman, on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. And so in the remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Now pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And upon these gifts of bread and juice, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your, Holy, through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, our honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with confidence as children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his own disciples as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. This time I would ask those who will be assisting me to come and to receive the first table. Let us stand. And as we stand, let us sing Silent Night.
Indeed, Christ is the light of the world, and you too are the light of the world. May you go from this place extending God's grace to all you come in contact with. And now hear this blessing. May the peace of God which surpasses all of our understanding guard your hearts and minds until we meet again. And God's people said, Amen. God bless and have a Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen.